Want to learn how to strike your irons pure every single time? If so, stay tuned and I'm going to show you just how. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to hit your irons pure every single time. If you're frustrated with hitting fat, thin, uh, top shots, any of those things that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis when you go out and play around, I know it's frustrating but we're going to show you how you can eliminate that for good. And before we dive into that, um, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button. That way you can get up to date um, notifications of any new video that we release over the next coming uh, few weeks. And uh, also, if you have not yet grabbed your free ticket to Consistent Golf Summit, make sure you go do that. Uh, we have brought in 18 of the world's leading experts in each various category of the game of golf and make sure you go grab that free ticket and i promise you that's going to change your game all right so now let's talk about how to hit pure iron shots so the first thing you have to understand is what creates a pure shot when you look at all the best ball strikers in the game like ben hogan sam sneed um, bobby jones and you know like jack nicholas arnold palmer and the list goes to like you know tiger woods fred couples you know the one thing that you look at every single one of those guys is that they all have something that allowed them to play at such a high level. You know, even though they had different swing uh, planes, they had different grips, they had different uh, stances, alignments, all those things. And yet, many of those things I just labeled, many people would say those are fundamentals. Well, they can't be because if it was a fundamental, every single one of them would be doing the exact same thing. We know that's not true or else they'd all have the same swing plane, they'd all have the same grip, they'd all have the same uh, alignment. And we know that's not the case. But then we got to sit back and go, okay, well, what's allowing them to play at such a high level? That one thing was the moment of impact. Now, I love what Mike and Andy of Stack and Tilt, uh, they came up with what was called three true fundamentals. You know, the first one is you got to have a good impact position. And then the second true fundamental was you got to be able to hit the ball in decent ways. You can't play the U.S. Open and only hit it 200 yards off the tee. You're not going to be able to compete. And then the third thing is you got to be able to control your shot shape okay so in other words if you were to wake someone up like Justin Rose in the middle of the night at 3 in the morning and say hey Justin hit this uh, stock fade he could do so half asleep okay so let's find out what does that stock shot look like for you so for that shot one thing that you'll see that is consistent across all those guys is that when you look at their swing as they take it back in their various ways and as they come back down you'll see that every single one of them had a transition to the lead side okay and then they're also keeping their hands in front of the club head and if you notice right here at the moment of impact for every single one of those guys and I promise you if you go back and you look at it um, you will see that every single one of them at the moment of impact the lead arm is leading and then the hands are in front of the club head and then also the weight has transitioned to the lead side okay so let's go ahead and take a look at one of those players right now Okay, so we're going to take a look at Justin Rose here. Um, one of the things I want you to pay attention to is watch his swing centers, upper center gravity being a shirt button, lower center gravity being his belt buckle. As he takes this back, notice how he stays relatively stable or keeping his centers more stacked as he's going back. It's a huge, huge piece that you must understand that is common across all great ball strikers in this game. Uh, one of the things I see that causes a lot of problems for a lot of players is that their upper center gravity is getting way over here. And then sometimes even both centers of gravity are getting way outside your right ankle. And that can cause a ton of issues because now you're having to um, not only get back to where you started at impact with your swing centers, but as you're going to notice here, that is a comment across all great ball strikers. Watch Justin as he moves forward. You can see he has now moved forward a, a good three to four inches. This is a huge piece because now we're loading up on the lead side. And as we continue to go down through to what we would consider what we call P5, that's going to be right here where the club shaft is about parallel to the ground. Notice his hands are covering his right thigh. This is a great checkpoint uh, for those of you that struggle with the impact position. Some of the, sometimes I see players, their hands are way outside their right thigh when the shaft is parallel to the ground, which is common for players that are getting their left arm and club prematurely in line too early. This causes fat shots and also causes thin shots, as I'll explain a little bit later. But this is a great checkpoint to know if you're on track or not. 
And as we continue to go forward, at the moment of impact, if you notice, the left arm and club are not fully in line yet. Uh, this is something that you must understand. The left arm and club do not ever get in line at the moment of impact, unless you're probably hitting like a fairly wood or definitely a driver. But for an iron shot, you must have the hands uh, slightly pressed forward unless you're hitting a specialty shot and you need to hit a high shot. Uh, but for well-struck iron shots, you're going to see hands are in front of the club head, weights on the lead side, and that's something that you must understand here. Now, as we try to move this past just a little bit, now you finally see the left arm and club fully in line. This is what creates the divot after the uh, impact. And that's what you've got to understand is that the low point is when the left arm and club fully get in line here. <clears throat> then the other thing that you must take place here is the hips are now clearing. And if you notice this belt buckle is starting to get to uh, the target. This is what allows his arms to fully straighten. For many of you that struggle with hitting uh, uh, shots and getting that chicken wing effect, one of the big reasons that causes it is that the hips stall out. And when the hips stall out, then the arms are forced to collapse on their own. So another key element that you must have is that the hips clear post impact. Okay, so now let's talk about the next thing. So as you just saw with Justin, you could see clearly that his weight was transitioned to the lead side, his hands were in front at the moment of impact, and so now we got to figure out how are we going to get that to apply to your game. Well, before we show you that, the biggest thing that you must understand that as I swing this club head around my body, okay, you would say that it's tracing an arc. And inside every arc, if we go back to that lovely class called geometry, we understood that there is a swing center or a center of the circle, and then there's a line that extends out from that. That is, in the golf swing, your swing center is just inside of your left shoulder. And then as this club and left arm get in line, that forms your radius. Why is that important to understand? Well, as you saw with Justin, at the moment of impact, his left arm and club weren't fully in line yet. Okay, it didn't happen until after impact that the left arm and club got fully in line. The major piece that you must understand with this is that the reason why you're seeing those fat shots, those thin shots, is due to this particular reason right here. If I come down and I get this left arm and club prematurely in line, guess what? I'm going to hit way behind the ball. That's the fat shot. Okay, then after a few of these where you keep hitting behind the ball and you're getting this left arm and club fully in line, okay, prematurely, then over time your body's going to get smart, it's going to send signals to your brain, and it's going to say, hey, we're about to do the exact same thing, we need to change something. Well, guess what the opposite is? If you haven't fixed the root problem, which is releasing this left arm and club in line too early, and you're about to do the exact same thing, but this time your body's like, hey, we need to change something, guess what the next thing is? You have to figure out how you're going to fit this left arm and club in here. Because remember, you got a radius that you got to fit between the left shoulder to the ground, to the ball. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to start releasing and shortening by left arm. And if you notice, my elbow is starting to bend a little bit more. The classic chicken wing, right? And so if you come down to impact, left arm and club is getting in line too premature, and you're about to bottom out again, then your only chance at this point to salvage it is to shorten the left arm, your radius. And so then you see that shot and then the classic chicken wing, okay? So we need to change that by working on a couple drills that I'm gonna show you right here. We talked about how the hands have to be in front of the club head. So if you notice right here, the angle of the shaft at the moment of impact is gonna be a little bit forward lean, right? And what you need to understand here is that this is how a great ball striker is going to make contact with an iron. What happens for a lot of you guys, especially when you hit fat shots or you hit thin shots, is that the handle of the club is starting to come this way and the club head is passing. And so this is where you see the top shots, this is where you sometimes hit way behind the ball, and that's the problem that you're running into. One of my favorite drills to fix this and get you to see this is when, if you look at a well-struck shot which is going to be about that angle right here and as you um, I'm gonna have my camera person bring this up a little bit closer and when you see this what I want you to pay attention to is let's say for an example if you look at both these balls right here 
if I were to come down and I had some sort of a like a like a sweeping motion right here, I could get away with hitting this ball clean. But if I keep that same thing here, notice that I'm now going to hit the ball's equator. I'm going to top it. So I can't have the same swing. I'm going to have to change the angle of attack, which is why I love doing what's called a ball in a divot drill, because what it's going to have to force you to do is now you're going to have to come in at an angle. And if you look at this, look at how now how forward the shaft lean has to be here. So this is going to be a great drill for you, and I'll show you what that looks like in action. So now I'm going to show you how you apply this. What you want to do is you want to find a shallow divot. Don't try to go really deep. Uh, one of the best ones are like the really fresh um, low divots that you can find on a range. And just like I have right here, where it's just a little bit below like on top of the grass so you can see there is a clear difference as I showed you those two balls close up. And what you're going to do is first start off by hitting some half swings. Okay, So you start off hitting a few like this. And what you want to do is you want to work through this um, one by one. <clears throat> so as you watch this, again, I'm finding a little shallow divot where it's just below the top of the surface. Because if I try to sweep it, I'll hit that thin top shot. You'll see a lot of that when you first start with this, if this has been a problem uh, for you um, ongoing. But as soon as you figure out how to change the angle of attack, to where now, when that ball's sitting down in the divot, now the hands have to get more in front. Why? Because I got to have the angle of attack. Think of this club head like an airplane. You have to come in at a now steeper angle, which then naturally gets the hands in front. It forms that flat left wrist that we want to look for at the moment of impact, just as we saw like guys like Justin Rose and some of the better players in the game. But you want us to keep these little short swings. And then as you work through this, start out with the quarter swing, um, then you go up to a half swing, then you go to a three quarter swing, and then work your way till you can finally do it with a full swing. And I promise you, as you apply this drill, this will radically change your ball striking. And with that, that's how you pure your irons. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed the content that we shared today. And if you did, uh, please, again, subscribe to the channel. Um, get notified for any of the new videos that we're going to be releasing over the next few weeks. Also, if you have not already done so, go get your free ticket for Consistent Golf Summit at consistentgolfsummit.com. That's where we brought 18 of the world's leading experts in each of the uh, main categories of the game of golf. And what we did was we took the expert and if you have an issue with putting, we brought in David Orr. And if you have an issue with wedge play, we brought in James Seekman. And if you want to understand biomechanics, well, guys, we brought in uh, Dr. Kwan, who was instrumental in helping Chris Como and uh, Tiger Woods work together. So we have a f list of phenomenal experts. Uh, make sure you go grab your ticket at that. I'll link that below. And with that said, guys, I'll see you on the next video.